And today's custom budget PC is built into the classic Cooler Master High Airflow PC case, also known as the Cooler Master Half. I spent a fair amount of time refurbishing this case and I think it really paid off. Before we get to what's installed inside, let's talk about the case a little bit. All the ARGB fans are by a brand called Thermalright, and I have four air intake fans installed onto the side panel, two air exhausts installed on top, one air exhaust in the back, and that's also a Thermal Red Assassin Spirit V2 CPU cooler with another ARGB fan installed. Luckily, the MSI motherboard that I have installed has an ARGB header so we can control the lights with MSI Mystic Light software. The case does support an extra air intake fan up here and an air intake fan below beside the power supply, but to keep the cost down I decided to keep those spots empty and also it would be kind of a pain in the butt to cable manage even further than what I had to do. So now let's take a look inside. All the thermal right fans inside this case including the CPU cooler are daisy chained together. As you can see you have to be careful taking the side panel off because the cables are attached. By daisy chaining I mean that you only have to attach one of these fans to a fan header on the motherboard as well as one of the ARGB headers on the motherboard and you can connect the rest and they will all act in tandem meaning that all ARGB controls will match up and all fan speeds will also match up with the exception of the CPU cooler that has its own header on the motherboard. So underneath the CPU cooler we have a Ryzen 5 5600X CPU with 6 cores and 12 threads. Beside that is 16GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 3600MHz RAM. And this rather colorful graphics card is a Zotac Gaming X GeForce RTX 3070 with 8GB of GDDR6 memory. The motherboard is a MSI B550M Pro and that's a Corsair RM70 750 watt modular power supply. There's Windows 11 Pro installed onto a Timetech MS09 NVMe solid state drive with 512 gigabytes of storage space. Here's what the SSD looks like. To accompany that I also installed a free 250 gigabyte Seagate hard drive for extra storage space. As you can see with this Cooler Master case, there's plenty of room for storage expansion. One thing about these older cases is that there's no real thought put into cable management or hiding the cables because usually there wouldn't be a big viewing window on the side panel. So we don't have a lot of space in the rear of the case to hide the cables. What I did do was wrap everything with cable ties so it doesn't get away, so it doesn't get in the way of system fans. And so at the very least, it does look like somebody made an effort to make things neat and tidy. And there's an older front I.O. on this PC case that features an eSATA port, USB 2.0, a Firewire port, and your typical headphone and microphone jacks, which is why I decided on this USB 3.0 expansion port. Also, there's a CD slash DVD RW optical drive. Before we move on, I actually really like building into this Cooler Master half case. I've done it a few times now, and with a few different versions of the case. I always wanted to fill up this side panel with case fans, and this time I finally got to. And you'll see this later on in the gaming performance tests. I was pleasantly surprised by how cool things were in the case, and how good the thermal performance was. So that kind of justifies me installing all the case fans and taking the time to route and manage all the cables. And with the side panel on, you don't even really see the cables. Onto the rear I.O. of the motherboard, we have some display ports that we can't use because the 5600X CPU does not have integrated graphics. But what we do have is a mouse and keyboard PS2 port, 2x USB 2.0, 4x USB 3.2, RJ45 Ethernet port, and some audio jacks. And the RTX 3070 has 1x HDMI 2.1 and 3x DisplayPort 1.4a. I'm pretty happy that this version of the half case has a painted back instead of just the bare metal. It really adds to the aesthetics. So now it's time to check out how well this CPU and GPU combo performs in DaVinci Resolve 19. So I have my usual 11 minutes of raw 1080p footage loaded up. Let's see how long it takes to render. And that rendered in 2 minutes and 57 seconds. I'd say that's pretty good results. 
And now we have Handbrake loaded up and I've got another 11 minutes of gameplay footage in 1080p. And I have it set to Creator 1080p 60 frames per second. So let's see how long this one takes. And it looks like this one's finishing up at 3 minutes and 2 seconds. Also not too bad. So that's about all I want to cover in this video. I think we'll transition to watching the gameplay footage. Definitely let me know if you're using a Cooler Master half case in 2024. I'm actually using one for my current workstation. On top of just marveling at how cool this case looks, hopefully this video helped you figure out if an RTX 3070 and Ryzen 5 5600X CPU are a good combo for you in 2024. In my opinion, they are a solid budget combo and you're not breaking the bank for some really good gaming performance. Thanks a lot for watching, have a great day.